Well hello year two and what a miserable rainy Thursday it has been but let's brighten it up and cheer it up with a bit more of Charlie in the Great Glass Elevator. Chapter six, Invitation to the White House. The President of the United States will now address you, announced the loudspeaker in the lobby of the Space Hotel. Grandma Georgina's head peeped cautiously out from beneath the sheets and Grandma Josephine took her fingers out of her ears and Grandpa George lifted his face off the pillow. He means how she can speak to us, whispered Charlie. Shh, said Mr Wonka. Listen. Dear friends, said the well-known presidential voice over the loudspeaker. Dear, dear friends, welcome to the Space Hotel USA. Greetings to the brave astronauts from Mars and Venus. Mars and Venus, whispered Charlie. He really thinks we're French, shh, 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 said Mr Wonka. He doubled up with silent laughter, shaking all over and hopping from one foot to the other. You've come a long way, the president continued. So why don't you just come a little tiny bit further and pay us a visit down here on our humble little earth. I invite all eight of you to stay with me here in Washington as my honored guests. You can land that wonderful glass air machine of yours on the lawn in the back of the White House. We shall have the red carpet out and ready. I do hope you know enough of our language to understand me. I shall wait most anxiously for your reply. There was a click and the president went off the air. What a fantastic thing, whispered Grandpa Joe. The White House, Charlie. We're invited to the White House as honoured guests. Charlie caught hold of Grandpa Joe's hands and the two of them started dancing round and round the lobby of the hotel. And see what they're doing up there. Mr Wonka, still shaking with laughter, went and sat down on the bed and signalled everyone to gather round close so they could whisper without being heard by the hidden microphones. They're scared to death, he whispered. They won't bother us anymore, but let's have that feast we were talking about and afterwards we can explore the hotel. Aren't we going to the White House, whispered Grandma Josephine. I want to go to the White House and stay with the President. You dear old dotty dumpling, said Mr Wonka. You look as much like a man from Mars as a big bug. They'd know it once they've been fooled. We'd be arrested before you could say how do you do. Mr Wonka was right. There could be no question of accepting the President's invitation. They all knew it. But we've got to say something to him, Charlie whispered. He must be sitting down there in the White House at this very minute waiting for an answer. Make an excuse, said Mr Bucket. But tell him we're otherwise engaged, said Mrs Bucket. All right, whispered Mr Wonka. It is rude to ignore an invitation. He stood up and walked a few paces from the group. For a moment or two, he remained quite still, gathering his thoughts. Then, once again, Charlie saw those tiny, twinkling, slimy wrinkles around the corner of the eyes, and when he began to speak, his voice this time was like the voice of a giant, deep and devilish, very loud and very slow. In the quiggy, quaggy sogmire, in the marshy, midious harshland, at the witchy hour of gloomness, all the groves came oozing home. You can hear them softly sliming, glissing, hissing o'er the slubber, all those oily, boiling bodies oozing onward in the gloom. So start to run, or skid and daddle through the slobber slush and sozzle. Skip, jump, hop, and try to scaddle, or the groves are on the road. In his study, 240,000 miles below, the president turned white as the White House. Jumping Jack Rabbits, he cried. Ah, oh, think they're after us. Ah, oh, please let me blow them up, said the ex-chief of the army. Silence, said Miss Tibbs. Go stand in the corner. In the lobby of the Space Hotel, Mr Wonka had nearly paused in order to think up another verse, and he was just about to start up again when a 
frightful piercing scream stopped him cold. The screamer was Grandma Josephine. She was sitting up in bed and pointing with a shaky finger at the far end of the lobby. She screamed a second time, still pointing, and all eyes turned towards the lift. The door of one of the lifts was sliding slowly open and the watchers could see that there was something, something thick, something brown, something not exactly brown, but greenish brown, something with slimy skin and large eyes squatting inside the lift. Chapter seven, something nasty in the lifts. That was only a quick chapter for the read on. Grandma Josephine had stopped screaming now, she'd gone rigid with shock. The rest of the group by the bed, including Charlie and Grandpa Joe, become still as stone. They dared not move, they dared hardly breathe. And Mr Wonka, who had swung round quickly to look when the first scream came, was as dumb struck as the rest. He stood motionless, gaping at the thing in the lift, his mouth slightly open, his eyes stretched wide as two wheels. What he saw, what they all saw, was this. It looked more than anything like an enormous egg balanced on its pointed end. It was as tall as a big boy and wider than the fattest man. The greenish-brown slime had shiny, wettish appearance and there were wrinkles in it. About three quarters of the way up in the widest part there were two large round eyes as big as teacups. The eyes were white but each had a brilliant red pupil in the centre. The red pupils were resting on Mr Wonka but now they began travelling slowly across to Charlie and Grandpa Joe and the others by the bed, settling upon them and gazing at them with a cold, malevolent stare. The eyes were everything. There were no other features, no nose, no mouth or ears, but the entire egg-shaped body was itself moving very, very slightly, pulsing and bulging gently here and there, as though the skin were filled with some thick, fluid air. There it is. Like a massive potato. That's not that scary to me. At this point, Charlie suddenly noticed that the next lift was coming down. The indicator numbers at the door were flashing six, five, four, three, two, one. L, the lobby. There was a slight pause, the door slid open, and there, inside the second lift, was another enormous, slimy, wrinkled, greenish-brown egg with eyes. Now the numbers are flashing above all three of the remaining lifts, and down they came, down, down, down. And soon, at precisely the same time, they reached the lobby floor and the door slid open. Five open doors now, one creature in each, five in all, and five pairs of eyes, with brilliant red centres, all watching Mr Wonka and watching Charlie and Grandpa Joe and all the others. There were slight differences in size and shape between the five, but all had the same greenish-brown wrinkled skin, and the skin was rippling and pulsing. For about 30 seconds, nothing happened. No one stirred. Nobody made a sound. The silence was terrible, and so was the suspense. Charlie was so frightened, he felt himself shrinking inside his skin. Then he saw the creature in the left-hand lift suddenly starting to change shape. Its body was slowly becoming longer and longer and thinner and thinner, going up and up towards the roof of the lift. Not straight up, but a curving, a little bit to the left, making a snake-like curve that was gr curiously graceful up to the left and then curling over the top to the right and coming down again in a half circle. And then the bottom end began to grow out as well, like a tail creeping along the floor creeping along the floor to the left until at last the creature, which had originally looked like a huge egg, now looked like a long, curvy serpent standing on its tail. <sighs> then the one in the next lift began stretching itself in much the same way, and what a weird and oozy thing it was to watch. It was twisting itself into a shape that was a bit different from the first, balancing itself almost but not quite on the tip of its tail. Then the three remaining creatures began stretching themselves all at the same time, each one elongating, what a fantastic word, itself slowly upward, growing taller and taller, thinner and thinner, 
curving and twisting, stretching and stretching, curling and bending, balancing either on the tail or on the head or both, and turn sideways now so that only one eye was visible. When they had all stopped stretching and bending, this is how they finished up. Do you know what it says? S C R A N. What does it spell out? Scram. Scram! shouted Mr. Wonka. Get out quick! People have never moved faster than Grandpa Joe and Charlie and Mr. and Mrs. Bucket at that moment. They all got behind the bed and started pushing like crazy. Mr. Wonka ran in front of them shouting, Scram! 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 And in 10 seconds flat, all of them were out of the lobby and back inside the great glass elevator. Frantically, Mr. Wonka began undoing bolts and pressing buttons. The door of the great glass elevator snapped shut and the holy thing leaped sideways. They were away. And of course, all of them, including the three old ones in the bed, floated up again into the air. Goodness gracious, what an exciting chapter that was. And chapter eight, the vermicious mids with a silent K. We will discover all about tomorrow. A fantastic Thursday evening and I will see you on Friday. Um, shout out to Noah and Alexis and Iskander who I know were worried when I didn't read for a couple of days. But do not fear, I am always here to read to you. Take care and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.